right, I would like to take your attention to Genesis 22. And we're going we're gonna to head to verse 10 through 14. And how about whenever you get there, you get, give your neighbor a good high five. Wake them up. Oh, no, you're not waiting. 22. <laughs> All right, and we're going right, to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and start this. All right, and they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Oh, I'm sorry, that was nine, my apologies. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called un, unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad. Neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. In verse 13, And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering to his <coughs> son. And lastly, verse 14, And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. And it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. We're all very familiar and we're all very understandable and knowledgeable of Abraham. I'm sure we could go around and talk about mighty things that he's done and just his personality and how he is. But, And I'm obviously, we're not very uncommon to the idea of the story of this. But uh, we're all very familiar that before verse 10 leading up to verse 10, that Abraham has a, a request and he has an order from God. God, it says in the first verse that God tempts him. So he goes in and God tells him, hey, I want you to give you, I want you to give me your only son. And, I, and that's where it leads up to 10. And as you, re, as you read through 10, obviously it says right here, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. That shows obedience. Abraham was obedient to the idea and the fact that, hey, I, I know what I was told to do and I'm going to do it. And then in verse 11, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Here am I is one of the strongest and most willing things that you can ever say in your life. Here am I. Because think about this. Think, think about it. Abraham was about to sacrifice the thing that he loved the most, and he gave it to himself. He, he, he was willing to do that. And he said, Here am I. And then as we see in verse 12, it says, And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, Neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And though Abraham doing what the Lord had asked him to do, God saw that he trusted him, and that because he trusted the Lord, he endured the test. And one of the thing, and, and I forgot to mention this, but my title is Named Landmarks. And if you look towards verse 13, you can look. Abraham did not wake up realizing he was going to have to sacrifice something. Yeah. He didn't realize that. He had to do something that he, not, that he never intended on doing. And as for some of you, there are some things that you're going through that you never intended on going through. Mm. You never intended through experiencing. You never intended through fighting yourself. And you're over here and you're on the mountain just as much as Abraham began to walk up that mountain. And he began to realize, I didn't, I didn't intend on doing this. And some of you, as I said, are walking through that mountain and God's over here he's trying to he's trying to pull you come on he's trying to pull you and you're like God I can't I can't do it God I can't do it and he's trying to pull you he's trying to pull you and all he's saying just say hey here am I here am I just say here am I and he's trying to keep you dedicated and he's trying to keep you structured and he's trying to keep you ordained through his plan and his promise that he's told you because the thing is he knows what you're going through yeah he knows what you're facing. He knows, and he knows the experience that you're some that you're going through. Some of you woke up this morning with your mind, and it's so, it's so attacked, and it's so wrenched, and it's so pushed at, and you don't even know what to do. And you're in the mountain, saying, and you're saying, God, I'm on a mountain right now. Mm. I don't know if I can make it up this mountain. You wake up, and you're going through all of what seems hell. You don't know if you can do it, but God's saying, Hey, let's get through this. Yeah. Come on, get up the mountain. Come on, get up that mountain. And he's beckoning you. And he's beckoning you. Yeah. And he's beckoning you. Come on. Get up that mountain. So as it says in verse 13, he offered him up for a burnt offering. And then you go to the next one. This is where I want to draw my, my point from, named landmarks. It says, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. If you look, 
If you look, Abraham named that mountain. That's kind of strange if you look at it. He named the mountain. You can look this through past times. You can look this through the word of God. Sometimes David named the place where Uzzah got struck dead, Para Uzzah, because he was in fault and he felt, he felt so disappointed. He, felt, and he was in question, God, why did you do this? And Abraham named that mountain that he got up, Jehovah Jireh. I'm here to proclaim to you today that some of you, I don't know who it is, but I feel it strong in the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you are in a, in a stance right now and you're in a place, but when God gets you up that mountain, when you're up that mountain, you're going to look over that mountain and say, hey, that's where I was. Yeah, yeah. That's where I once was. Yeah, and you're going to look back at that mountain. You're going to name that mountain. You're going to say, hey, that's Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. That's what God brought me out of. Yeah. Yeah. That's what mm. he pulled me out of. And you're going to look back at that landmark Amen. and say, hey, that's just a name of landmark of what God brought me out of. Thank and that's God. just going to be another thing that the Lord pulled me through. Yeah. That's just another thing that God brought me through. And that's a named landmark now, and I'm not going to worry about that anymore because I realize that I was once in a place of struggling up that mountain. Mm -hmm. I was once walking up that mountain, but yet God pulled me through, and now I'm on that mountain, and it's just a named landmark. That, And you're going to start naming your landmarks. Hey, I remember that one time when I struggled with depression. Depression? Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. Lord my provides. Hey, I remember when I had that issue with my mind. I remember when I couldn't even stay stable. I remember when I would be in the midst of a dry season and I didn't know what to do and I didn't know where to turn to. But I look over that mountain and say, hey, you're just another named landmark now, just as Abraham said in the Bible. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Come on. Ha! Yeah! I will fear no evil. Yeah. But I know the Lord, my God, is with me. Some of you need to start getting up in your mind right now. That's just going to be a named landmark. Yeah. And that's just going to be another thing behind you that it ain't going to hold you. It ain't going to consume you. But you're going to look back at it, and it's going to be a named landmark. So I say to you today, and I'll leave this in conclusion with you. As it says in Luke 22, 32, I pray that your faith... Faileth you not. So I pray that today. I pray that your faith fail you not. Thank you.